Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mount and Blade Bannerlord and we are doing another ranking video for troops and this time it's going to be our two-handed infantry. I would have called it like pikemen or polemen users or something like that but not all of them do. Uh, but we are going to be ranking all five of them from worst but again mind you still a lot better than most of the other infantry in the game and even most of the other two-handed infantry in the game all the way to best which is just the bee's knees for infantry. And we're going to be ranking them based on a number of things. What armor they have, what weapons they have, what skills they have, how hard or easy they are to recruit, just a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, this video is up to date with the uh, full release of the game in 2022, so this is not outdated in any way, and we will go through them all. So let's just start it off with number five. All right, so at number five, we have the Batanian Fion slash the Batanian Fion Champion. And now this one's interesting, uh, interesting, interesting because these aren't actually classed as an infantry unit, they're actually archers. But that being said, the Fion and the Fion Champion come equipped with a two-handed weapon. And the Fion has a, a stat of 130 in there, but then the Fion Champion has a stat of 220. And so that paired with the fact that they've got nice high athletics, the 170 for the Fion Champion, uh, and pretty dang solid armor makes them actually one of the best infantry units in the game too. And uh, then on top of that, you have the added advantage of them also being the best archers in the game. So if you want to have just a ridiculously good army, like I've said in other videos, I'll say it again here, Batanian Fians and Fian Champions make the best army in the game because they are not only the absolute best archers in the game, which they are, but they're also one of the best infantry units in the game. So... Solid, solid units here. Real good armor, high skills. You can see athletics of 170 and two-handed of 220. And like I said, that comes with the big two-handed sword. And then on top of that, also bow of 260 and, you know, two quivers of arrows. Um, but ridiculously good units in that regard. Uh, the only downside of them is you do have to find the Batanian Highborn Youth, so they're not the basic unit in the game. You actu actually have to find the uh, the cities or, or villages that do actually have them avail available to recruit. But once you do, man oh man, are they just fantastic troops. So yes, uh, I'm actually ranking the Batanian Fion and the Fion Champion uh, as the number five spot on our best two-handed infantry because with that stat of 220 and that big two-handed sword they have, mwah, you can't even you can't even fight them. They're so good. So that's number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, and so at number four, we've got another one that's kind of interesting uh, in a regard. So basically, uh, there's the debate between the Batanian Veteran Folksman, which I would put at number four, and the Batanian Folksman, just plain. And so basically, the contention here comes down to the fact that uh, the veteran folksman has this big long polearm weapon and sometimes won't actually have a folks so it's interesting to call them a folksman uh, but in my testing sometimes they do have a folks which is their big uh, two-handed weapon instead of a polearm and sometimes they have both uh, but you know that's neither here nor there the big thing about the folksman uh, the veteran folksman is that it does have that polearm which makes it especially useful against cavalry and they have a uh small amount of throwing axes and so if we just look at the stats on these you can see our pole arm is 130 which is decent two-handed of 100 which isn't fantastic uh it's the same as the folksman but you know considering most of the time they're using their pole arm anyway you know there's that uh the only weakness that the folksman has is in sieges so if you're even attacking or defending defending they're a little bit better than attacking because they've got their axes and everything uh but they're not great at attacking fortresses but they are pretty dang good out in the open field one of the best in fact uh nice high athletics of 130 like i said uh they do have throwing weapons and a high throwing skill of 120 they've got pretty dang solid armor it's a little bit on the lighter side but not ridiculously light it, it holds up pretty well so yeah the veteran folksman i think is worth it because Yes, they they lose the Falks, which is a fantastic weapon. It, like, one-hits most enemies. Uh, so you will find people that'll say it's better not to upgrade them. But I think uh, you could either make maybe keep a mix, so you have some that are really good against infantry or climbing up ladders and stuff, and then some that are excellent against cavalry like these ones are, or whatever the case may be. But the Batanian veteran Folksman takes the number four spot on my on this list. I find them to be an excellent, excellent weapon. And uh, because they don't have, a lot of times they won't have that Falks, they'll have the pull arm instead. If I'm using them against infantry and stuff like that, where they might have a disadvantage of their 
their weapon not being nearly as fast or nimble. Then I use them in what I call the charge and withdraw maneuver. So I'll charge them in, smash them against the line, and they do a ton of damage with that with that big pole arm there. You know, they can take out multiple people in one hit. And then as soon as it starts to slow down, I pull them back out and I charge a different troop in. And then once they're reformed, I charge them again. They work really good as a shock troop. So yeah, the Batanian Veteran Folksman takes the number four spot. All right, and so at the number three spot, right in the middle, we have the Azurai Mamluk Palace Guard. Uh, one of my favorite units in the game for a lot of reasons. Uh, for one thing, they are just recruited through the Azurai Recruit, so any little village or large city in the Azurai ta territory, which is, of course, the desert to the south of the map, uh, you're going to find a lot of Azurai Recruits, and then you just upgrade them all the way down the right path. So Mamluk Soldier, Mamluk Axeman, Mamluk Guard, and finally Mamluk Palace Guard. And so these guys are great. For one thing, they've got really good armor. They're very well protected. For another thing, they've got this huge two-handed axe, which is also a super high damage weapon. It's great against shields, it's really effective against cavalry, and it's excellent against infantry and archers. It's a solid weapon. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, they have a two-handed skill of 130, and Pairing that with that axe, you know, pretty deadly. They also have an athletics of 140, which is above average, and uh, makes them pretty fast, even though they've got really heavy armor, which gives them great protection. They also have a bunch of throwing hatchets and a throwing skill of 130, so very effective at uh, medium to short range with those throwing weapons there. Honestly, Again, like most Azurai troops, a pretty overlooked unit, but really, really good if you want heavy shock infantry, because they are just uh, pretty dang close to being what I'd call top tier. Uh, so again, just going over the perks, super good armor, excellent weapon and, and stats, weapons and stats, I should say. And they also, like most Azurai troops, have a great, their armor has a great weight to protection ratio. So it's, the armor is lighter than other armor that gives the same protection, like than Imperial armor that gives this level of protection, or that Vlan or than Vlandian armor that gives this level of protection. It is really good armor, and they stay pretty mobile because they've got a high athletics and it's not nearly as heavy. So the Azurai Mamluk Palace Guard are they take the number three spot on this list, but they are some of my favorite troops in the game. All right, and so at our number two spot, the runner-up place, we have the Sturgeon Heroic Linebreaker, or of course the more fun name, the Ulfhednar, <laughs> which is just lots of fun. And so for for these ones, you're going to recruit them a uh, major city or small village in the Sturgeon territory, which is the, of course, far north region. Uh, and they start out as the Sturgeon recruit, and then you're going to follow the left path for a while and then the right. So it's going to go down to Sturgeon warrior, Sturgeon soldier, then you're going to take the right path, Sturgeon linebreaker, and Sturgeon heroic linebreaker. And so these guys are top tier. They're super good. Again, just like the last one, they're going to have really nice heavy armor that gives them excellent protection. They have a nice high athletics of 150, so again, well above average for athletics there, so they are very mobile. Uh, they've got that great big, super powerful two-handed axe, a lot like the Mamluk Palace Guard, uh, and these ones have a two-handed skill of 150, so really, really deadly in their hands. Uh, but they also have those throwing axes and a throwing skill of 130. So they're going to be really effective up close with that two-handed axe and really effective with those throwing axes. So definitely a uh, versatile troop. These ones make some of the best shock troops in the game. Just just ridiculously good. Uh, they're excellent at charging in and breaking through lines. They'll take down shields. They'll really quickly kill other infantry units so they're great in the open field great in a siege especially uh during the assault of a siege because they've got nice heavy armor really athletic and super powerful i've seen these guys crest the the top of a wall and and clear it in no time uh they're also of course because they have axes really good at taking down the doors and other barriers uh but that's neither here nor there um Really, really great units. I love them a lot. They do have that throwing app, uh, weapon, which also makes them pretty dang effective at at the uh, at taking out, well, cavalry, skirmishers, uh, and, of course, light infantry and archers. So, really effective unit. I love them. Don't overlook the Sturgeons. They are very close to top tier whenever you're thinking infantry. And, of course, two-ended infantry is no different. The Sturgeon Heroic Linebreakers, or Ulfhednars, are just fantastic. So, that's number two. Let's move on to number one. All right, and at number one, we've got the troops that you saw at the beginning of the video that I was using in battle, the Vlandian Vulgiers. These ones are really good units. Uh, 
you may have seen in the video I suffered very few casualties. That's because these guys are just devastatingly deadly. They're so good. So basically, they start out as the Vlandian recruits, which anywhere in Vlandia, which is the far west side of the map, uh, you're going to find these in cities and villages. You start with the recruit, upgrade them to the footmen, then the spearmen, billmen, and vulgir. And now the fun thing here is because your option from billmen is vulgir or pikemen. The Vulgar is better than the Pikemen for pretty much everything. Yes, the Pikemen have this nice long pike that is good against cavalry charges if you brace them in a in like a square. They're pretty effective, but other than that, the Pikemen kind of suck. But the Vulgar are really good. You know, that's the difference between the two here. That, that uh, two-handed weapon that they use is extremely effective against archers, infantry, and cavalry. Uh, they've got pretty good armor. It's a little bit heavier than the uh, Ulfhednar's. Uh, but, you know, close to that same mark. So it's not going to be nearly as good as a lot of your heavy infantry, you know, with all the solid plate armor that they're, that the, like, uh, Imperial Legionaries and stuff like that wear. But it is going to be pretty dang effective at protecting them. Uh, you can see that their two-handed and their pole arm is both 130. Sometimes you'll see them with a two-handed weapon too. But most of the time they're going to have the Volgear since that's, you know... The weapon they're using is the one they're named after, so it makes sense that that's going to be the one that almost all the time they have. Uh, but other than that, they also have throwing weapons and a throwing ability of 80. So slightly lower throwing ability than the last two that we looked at, but still high enough. It's just they make up for it in how effective they are in the battlefield. Their, their pole arm is ridiculously good. So... A lot of good things to like about these guys. Again, they're 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 good at pretty much everything. Their weakest point would definitely be besieging a fortress, and their strongest point is used as shock frontline infantry. So these are again ones that you're going to want to smash into the front line. They're going to bust up enemy shield formations, and they're going to quickly tear uh, anyone they can get their hands on apart. Uh, the best thing you could do with these guys to support them is either give them archers or cavalry for support. So some archers to keep the other archers off their backs because because they're not nearly as fast as certain troops, even though their athletics is 130, uh, or cavalry to skirmish around and take out the cavalry. But yeah, Vlandian Volgares, top tier, best two-handed infantry units in the game. And so that is all five. And now obviously, like I said, these units are going to have strengths and weaknesses that the one-handed or the sword and shield infantry don't have. Uh, and so like, obviously most of them, if not all of them, don't have shields. So obviously that's a weakness, and some of them don't even have short weapons, they just have their two-handed weapon. So they won't be as good in a siege. Where they are strong is in shock ability, so these units are excellent at charging in and causing problems. Many of them can take out multiple enemies in a single strike. You know, they are just ridiculously powerful infantry. They have weaknesses, some of them aren't, for example, wearing nearly as heavy of armor as you'll find in the sword and shield infantry. But, uh, you know, I think that gets made up for in just their raw shock power that they have at crashing through enemy lines or taking out cavalry. Uh, a lot of your sword and shield infantry is very strong against archers and infantry, but much weaker against cavalry, whereas your two-handed infantry are very strong against cavalry and are very, very good against infantry and archer archers with a tiny weakness and having slightly lighter armor but with all that in mind that is all for today so that was in order of worst to best number five the batanian fion which you know was interesting because they're mostly an archer uh number four the batanian veteran folksman number three the azurai mamluk palace guard number two the sturgeon oof or the heroic linebreaker and number one the vlandian vulgar so which you can see i've got here uh, but yeah, like I said, as far as two-handed infantry in the game goes, this ranking holds pretty true based on hundreds of hours of experience that I've got testing these guys. Just excellent units overall. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. But that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.